Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and today we're going to talk about mix downs and sidechain compression and what is sidechain compression? Well, I've got a track here that I'm working on and it has absolutely no sidechain compression in it whatsoever and I've bounced down a copy of that with just a glue compressor and the master set to a very, very low, uh, basically a limiter so that we can compare this non-sidechain version of the track to a version with sidechain once we've finished applying all the sidechains to all the different elements. So let's have a listen to the track really quick just to, just so you get an idea of what we're working with here. By the way, you can go like this. If you didn't know that, you can just drag that up so you can see um, more of the levels. So you can see we've got some pretty bad um, peaking problems there. Let's check out the bigger drop. Yeah, it's not looking good. And also, um, if you have a trained ear, you'll notice that the drums are sitting kind of far back in the mix. They're not right in your face and they're not punching you in the face, you know? So we're going to fix that. So let's get started. So what is sidechain? Well, it's basically just volume automation. So every time the trigger channel triggers something, a sound that goes over a certain threshold, it will trigger a volume automation. And you can adjust the volume automation by attack and release times and, and how much, um, how far down the volume drops and things like that. Actually, all compression is basically just volume automation, like automatic volume automation that you don't need to program yourself. And that's why it's so convenient and that's why a lot of people use it. Let me just talk a little bit about how I've got this set up. I've got my drum meat here, which is the, the big kick and snare, um, routed into this drum bus, which is just an empty channel set to input mode there. By the way, if you don't see all this stuff, you can just click the input output uh, button over here and then um, send it into the channel that you want. And, uh, and then the breaks channel here is just um, a couple of um, percussion elements. Okay, and the reason I did that, um, sending them into a, into a drum bus, is because I want to be able to hear and see visually how loud the combination of these two channels actually is. And, you know, I could solo them and look at the master, but um, I find it more convenient to do it like this. Okay, so let's have a listen. So you can see the brakes channel is a lot louder. I could just turn that down, but instead, we're going to use some automatic volume automation, AKA sidechain compression to achieve that. And it's really easy to do. So we'll just drag in a compressor. And then if you don't see that other panel, you can just click this little arrow and, and we'll just enable sidechain. And the audio from will be from our drum meet. And, <clears throat> and then you get a secondary box here because it's in a drum rack. So we want to choose kick post effects. And then we can just rename this uh, kick side chain. Okay. And now what you'll see is when I, when I play this again and start bringing this threshold down, um, you'll see the game reduction um, indicator activating. And you can also hear the effect. You can hear this breaks channel, the percussion elements, ducking in volume. Um, and But that we're only covering the kick there, so what we can do is just hit Control D or Command D to duplicate that, and then we'll just rename this snare. And we can route that to our snare, snare post effects. It really pays to make sure everything's named correctly um, when you're doing this kind of routing and stuff. It just makes it so much easier to just click a box and find what you need. And now we have two sidechain compressors. Let's have, let's just solo the brakes channel. Okay, sounds a lot different. Let's just put these in a group. Control G. Now this is an extreme example of um, sidechain compression. So we're going to dial it back a bit. Um, and what I've noticed is the kick is, and let's just turn that off, the kick sidechain compression. Because my kick is so long, 
It's like, it's sending a lot of signal um, to my sidechain compressor here. And it's almost too long. So there's a few ways we can avoid or change that because like turning the release time down is not going to see how it still sort of hangs down there. We want that to be um, a lot quicker. Um, so what you can do is turn on the EQ and then just take a high pass filter so that we're only getting the attack, the snap of the sound. And you can see how much quicker that is now. But I find all of this kind of stuff really, um, how do you say, really just not, uh, not uh, perfect enough, not exact enough for me. So what I like to do instead is create a new channel, create a new MIDI channel, my bad, Control Shift T, and we're going to call this sidechain, okay, and we'll put this over here, and we'll color it a dark color, because we don't really want to pay attention to it too much once we set it up, and then we're going to drag in an operator, and we're just going to take a saw wave, and over here on the arrangement tab, create a new MIDI clip, and we're just going to put Um, a note every quarter note, which matches up with our kicks and snare. You can see my kick, snare, kick, snare, and then bip, 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 bip. So that's our um, side chain sort of mimicking what our kicks and snares are doing. Okay, and then we can loop it and just drag it out. Okay. But we want to check a few things first. So let's solo this channel. Okay, it's negative one dB below. Um, my goal here is to make this as loud as possible and as short as possible so that in our actual sidechain compressors that we set up before, um, which I deleted for some reason, <laughs> uh, we can use the attack and release times to perfectly um, calibrate exactly what we want. And we're just using this as a tiny uh, trigger. So let's... Um, yeah, let's take a shorter envelope. Let's go with like 50 milliseconds. And we're going to turn this up. So that it's just below. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And the cool thing about Ableton is... Once you set something like this up, oh, also we never want to hear that, so we'll mute it. Once you set something like this up, you can just drag this into your user library and then call it, you know, sidechain. I've already got one there. You can see it. Um, and then anytime you want to set a quick sidechain channel, boom, just drag it in and you're good to go. So you only have to do this once. Okay. Let's delete that. I've already got one in there. All right. So back to the brakes channel with the compressors. Let's try this again. Okay. So instead of side chaining to the kick and the snare now, we only need to worry about just side chaining to the side chain channel. So we'll turn the side chain on, we'll select the side chain channel, and then we can mess with the uh, threshold. So let's have a listen. So this is an extreme example, obviously. By the way, I really like to set the knee to zero and the look ahead to 10. Um, I've just done some experimenting just by recording and seeing what works the best. And I feel like this works the best. I've seen other producers do it as well. So what you really want to be focusing on, oh, by the way, ratio is always infinity. Okay. Uh, what you really want to be focusing on is your attack and release times so that it matches the feel of the song and then obviously your threshold. So. I find usually around 50 milliseconds is pretty good. Let's have a listen to um, the brakes channel and the drum meet together in our drum bus. And look at that. Let's try with side chain off. 
we're peaking way up here and then so we can actually back off a bit on that I would say that's pretty good cool um, let's also go into the drum meet um, now if I listen to the drum beat by itself um, sometimes well I guess not in this case but sometimes when when I have a pattern that has a, a hat every you know quarter note or eighth note or whatever that is um, sometimes when the kick plays at the same time as the hat and then the snare plays at the same time as the hat it can give you an unnecessary peak and so sometimes it's kind of a good idea to sidechain your hats just a touch so actually let's not go through all that garbage again let's just hold control and drag this to here and then we can just copy paste the same settings So it's a very subtle um, effect, but you get the idea. So we've got our drums um, sitting pretty nice. What I like to do when I'm doing a mix down next is route the sub into the drum bus and, um, and then start figuring out the relationship between the big kick and the rest of the drums combined with the sub, okay? Let's listen to the sub by itself. All right, so what we're going to need to do is sidechain um, the kick and maybe a bit of the snare to that. So <clears throat> let's go with another compressor. We might try sidechaining the kick. Because the kick has more um, lower frequencies because it's the kick right it's really fat in in the low end um, of the frequency spectrum it's going to clash with the sub which is also in the low end so when the kick hits we want that to side chain the sub quite a lot but then when the snare hits um, it's not as subby so we don't need to side chain it as much so I like to side chain these separately for the sub so let's go yeah, we've chosen the kick and let's just bring this down we might do the little eq trick um it's not as exact but we can we can get a feel for it like now hear that little click there that is something that only the um ableton 9 um compressor does so there's a few ways there's a few ways to remove that click um, some people like to just put their like this is a sub right so we're cutting um, well we're actually cutting 100 and 100 Hertz um, I like to put this on the other side and you'll never get a click like that the reason there's a click is because um, a sine wave that's playing so low like that is a very stretched out um, waveform and when you're doing a, a really fast uh, volume automation it could be in the middle of one of its phases and then it has to suddenly go straight down and that'll actually change the smooth sound of a sine wave into more of a saw wave adding harmonics giving you a click so um, we know to to get rid of harmonics we can just take a low cut uh, you know a low pass but let's try you know, let's just turn this off I have the live um, 8 compressor in here and we'll route that to the side chain attack is at zero so this should be click city right now but lo and behold there's no kit there's no clicks at all if we change um, the actual algorithm suddenly we're getting clicks I don't know what the deal is with that one, but FF2 seems to be click city, but FF1 is, is um, smooth sailing. So it's up to you um, whether you want to use the Live 9 compressor and then have a cut afterwards. 
but I like to use the Live 8 compressor um, because you can't always have a low cut, you know, and then if you're getting into frequency splitting and things like that, it makes it very complicated. Um, but generally Live 8 is really good at, at having um, no clicks at all. So let's roll with the Live 8 one. And then let's have a listen to that together. Okay, that's a lot better if I turn the compressor off. Peeking up here a bit more. We haven't even um, done the... Oh, we're actually sidechaining the sidechain. Oh yeah, we were going to do the, um, the kick and snare separately. That's right. Let's do that. Okay, I'm just using my ears and kind of looking at the, the game reduction there. Let's duplicate that, choose the snare, and then we can probably back way off on that. Looking pretty good. There's a couple of little spikes, but it's a lot better, yeah? So we can probably, um, we'll just leave that on the drum bus for now. All right, so let's bring in some more elements here. What's happening with these two channels? I think we're gonna duplicate our side chain from the breaks channel onto this other bass. And we are getting a couple of clicks, so let's just put this b before the um, the split. Oh, we're actually taking mids and highs. Okay. If you are getting clicks and there's just no way to avoid it, you can just bring up the attack. Which will make the sidechain compression a little less accurate. But, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do to avoid clicks. So I have nothing on the master and we're we still got plenty of headroom there. Alright, so the next big one is the instrument channel. <laughs> this is gonna be tough, but let's give it a shot. So this this sound here is kind of the other half or the partner for this other bass section. So we might just copy this onto here and um, so all we're really trying to um, sidechain out here is the the big attack sounds of the kicks and snares. That's that's the part of the drum that makes it punch the big snap at the front of the kick and snare. So if we can drop everything else a little bit just to leave a bit of room for that to be as loud as possible and punch you in the face, then um, it's going to make your drums sound way better. Trust me. All right. So we can probably bring the release time down a little bit on this guy is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Let's just roll with that for right now. So we got a bit of an echoey sound. Um, put that on there. And we might do it before the ping pong. So that the echo doesn't sound weird. Because uh, if you side chaining like a reverb, uh, something after a reverb or something like that, you know, that you want the reverb tail to be intact. You know, pshh not like ducking halfway through and stuff, so.
Okay, what do we got now? I'm not too worried about tiny little peaks like that because um, when you're doing a mix down, that's what the that's what the mastering stage is for, okay? I'm just going to go on a tangent right now, but like mixing down is this kind of stuff, EQing, compressing, getting your levels right, and things like that. And then once you've given the master channel a pretty stable looking um, signal, no wild crazy peaks that are totally out of the blue and things like that, then you can throw something like Isotope Ozone onto the master channel and just tone those peaks down a bit. And that's all mastering really is, um, in, in my opinion. I mean, you can get real nerdy with it and break out the analog gear and shit, but, but that's the way I view music. And I think a lot of people think that they can send their piece of shit song that sounds like garbage and all, the bass is all muddy and stuff like that with, because it's c clashing with the kick drum and everything like that to a mastering engineer and they're just going to polish it up and it's going to be perfect. But no, you're the guy who has to do this shit. So um, stop relying on, on, on mastering engineers to, to bail you out. I master all of my songs and this is exactly how I do it. I just side chain things, EQ things, and then give the master a pretty, you know, stable level and then that's it. All right, <laughs> rambling a bit. Let's get back to work. <laughs> We've actually got all the elements in except for the effects channel and this is where I want to talk about a little neat trick that you can do. So in this like channel here, I've got this white noise thing and what you can actually do, this is really cool, I think Mr. Bill showed me this one, is you can drag in an auto pan and I actually have this saved as a preset, as the default preset because I pretty much only use it for this. but. Um, let me just grab a different preset and we'll, we'll get to there. So auto pan is a panning and volume automation thing. And so what you can actually do with it, set the amount to full, set the rate to quarter note, um, phase to zero, and then we'll go with a saw wave with a 0% shape and then invert it. And you can see that the volume is going to start from, from absolutely zero and go all the way up to maximum every quarter note. Okay, so it sounds like this now. If I put that after the reverb. And that's kind of like your classic um, four on the floor um, side chain sound. Like normally you'd have a kick in at every quarter note, but inch, 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 inch. That's like the, <laughs> so it's like a quick, dirty little trick to get a quick um, side chain effect. And um, I like to use that on my on my white noise sweeps and stuff like that. And put in a reverb after it sounds pretty nice as well. But other than that, I feel like we're ready. Look at that stable level. Well, we've done pretty well in that section. Let's, um, okay. So everything's going to fall apart if we don't copy over our side chain to mimic the drums here. So let's just do that. Da -da 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 -da. And then this goes faster. I'm just looking at the MIDI information there. And then it's back to the same old quarter note. Okay. Hmm. This part at the end. That does not sound good. That's an example of probably too much side chain. So, mm -hmm. maybe we should back off on that a little bit. Yeah. 
This is when it becomes like a real balancing act. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to back both of these off a little bit and then we'll just move on. I'm not going to sit here and tweak it for ages. But that is that is probably one of the most difficult things to, to nail when it comes to um, side chaining. And sometimes I just will actually turn off a side chain and enable a different one that has different settings and have um, it compressed in a different way for sections like that. But for now, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so we have no sidechain on this bass chops channel, which is all this garbage. And we actually don't have anything on there at all on this channel. <laughs> so, uh, what am I doing here? Yeah, let's let's just throw a glue compressor on so that we can get like a a stable sort of signal, and then we'll just steal the side chain from this brakes channel. All right, we're getting clicks with that one, so we're gonna take the live eight, I think. Okay, some of those clicks are in the actual sound, and it's probably uh, intentional. Oh, there was a bit of a big peak there. That's not a huge deal. Okay, let's finally compare the no sidechain version with the sidechain version. Cool. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of compression and yeah, we can hear the difference. The drums sound much better in that section. Feel those kicks really punch in there, that's way better. Yeah, hopefully you can hear the difference. It's it's subtle, you know, but um, it's uh, I think it's really important to bring those kicks and snares forward in the mix. Thanks for watching, and if you've got any other questions and suggestions for what I should do a tutorial on next, give me a shout in the comments. And if you like these kinds of videos, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. <laughs>